everybody. It is great to be here today. I wore the closest thing I have to a flight suit. Hope, <laughs> not quite sure, but uh, you know, close enough. And I wanted to start today with a slide as a nod to our theme um, that highlighted probably one of the most high performing teams on earth. I don't know who's seen the Blue Angels. They're unbelievable. We, have a, we are lucky to have a fighter pilot who will be speaking with us later today, and he can certainly confirm or deny, but I believe their margin for error is six to 12 inches. They make a little, little mistake, and it's gonna cost them a $21 million plane and potentially their life. So with that, let's figure out a little bit more in terms of how to build a, a high-performing team just like the Blue Angels. So the people you see on this slide are a whole variety of entrepreneurs. They're founders, they've, they've developed companies, products, and now they're building and scaling at all different stages. Michelle Grant in the upper left started a company about 18 months ago called Lively, and her mission is to empower women through the creation of a line of clothing. She has about 11 employees, and so she's early. Eric Wu in the top right, um, founded a company called Open Door. Open Door has added 200 employees to their now 300 employee base in the last year and a half. And they are doing, he's a platform for residential real estate. Mike Farley in the middle started a company called Tile, which is a hardware device that you attach to your keychain and then you can download an app to help find your keys if you lose them or anything else that you might want to find. He has about 120 employees and is scaling quickly. Then you go to the team at Airbnb, thousands of employees around the world and scaling quickly. So everything from Michelle at Lively through the team at Airbnb, you have all stages of growth, all kinds of different products, services, but the common denominator are people. And in terms of starting to define and think about how to create a great foundation for your people. I like to think about the mission, as you do when you're a fighter pilot, but the mission of a company is so critically important because it's the why. And mission statements and missions, as tech companies are now defining them, have changed over the last several years. This is IBM's mission statement from, you know, not long ago, from up, it was the mission statement up until 2003. At IBM, we strive to lead in the creation, development, and manufacture of the industry's most advanced information technologies, including con computer systems, software, networking systems, storage devices, and microelectronics. Quite a mouthful, and the reason for people to get out of bed in the morning. Our more recent tech companies, look at the difference in the missions. Facebook to make the world more open and connected. Airbnb, to help create a world where you can belong anywhere. Belonging anywhere is their, their brand essence right now. Open Door, we're helping people move on to life's next chapter. No mention of a product, no mention of a service, a broader purpose-driven communication, succinct, but very much attached to human emotion. This, is a huge recruiting advantage. And it's what millennials expect. Values is the second pillar that I think is really, really important. Values are the behaviors that you re both reward and punish. It's the actions and the behaviors that people exhibit within your company. No matter the stage, from two people to 2,000 people, your values are the behaviors, again, that you reward and punish. I have Facebook's values up here because they're, they're pretty well known, but they are so central to how the company is run. And they've been an incredible anchor for that employee base as, as they've grown to 18, 19,000 people. Focus on impact, be bold, move fast, be open, build social value. All action-oriented phrases that inform the employees for how to act, absolutely critical. So remember, values equal behavior. What is company culture? It's defined as how your values are displayed in, in people's actions every single day. That is what forms your company culture. 
And there's actually a business case for spending a lot of time. Again, whether you're two people, 50 people, 255,000, company culture is critical. The business case, as this suggests, is that better, better company cultures result in better businesses. Since 2009, a portfolio of Fortune's best companies to work for outperformed the S&P 500 by 84%. Similar portfolio of Glassdoor's best places to work outperformed the overall market by 115%. It's significant. Now that's the business case. Then there's the, the why, the, the human practical orientation. The mission, the values, and the culture are the North Star. Again, emphasis on whether you're two people or 5,000. Through the ups, the downs, the highs, the lows, people want something to anchor to, and this is it. Your, the mission and the value, this all becomes the roadmap for recruiting. Recruiting is as competitive as it's ever been, especially in this geography, as it is around the world. And to anchor, you have to give your recruiting team and your talent team something to anchor to. So hard to know where they're going, hard to get to where they're going without a roadmap. This is the roadmap. It's a fabric for decision making. I remember being at Facebook and having people really question some of the decisions that Mark was making about this or that or what have you. And the common phrase that kind of came back with, well, he's so committed to our mission that he makes decisions around making the world more open and connected. That's a powerful thing as a leader. It defines who you are as a company. So I'm a big believer in action. For the founders out there, whether you're early, mid, or late, here are four things to really set the foundation around what I just discussed. One, invest the time to define the mission, your higher level purpose, the meaning of what you're building, the why. And the millennials expect it. When you're recruiting, sometimes you cannot compete on cash, but you can compete by connecting emotionally with those candidates from very junior, graduating from college, through your senior leaders. They need to attach to your mission and to the broader um, purpose of what you're doing. Two, invest in a values exercise. You can do this either internally or there are external teams that, that are excellent at facilitating this. Um, but starting, a lot of companies uh, oftentimes go to their aspirational values. They will write trust, integrity, and honesty on a paper, frame it, stick it on the wall. Don't do that. Start at the beginning and figure out what are the behaviors that exist at your company today? So what are the values? What behaviors are you rewarding? And what behaviors are you punishing? Craft the aspirational values and then work to get there. I actually had a company, small aside, who was acquired by a larger company that we would all know. And when the acquirer came to visit them, they had their values. They did not clearly subscribe to them. They had the values in a frame that they would put next to the wall and they would put them off the wall when, they were, when the acquirer was not there, when they came to visit. Up on the wall they went. Not what you're trying to create. Use data to help manage your culture. There are excellent tools out there. Um, you know, this, the whole premise is to apply science to your people. We apply science and data to everything else. Do it, you know, use the same philosophy around people management. CultureAmp is a great tool. Glint is a great tool. There are many, many others. But you can use them to kind of pulse your employee base on a periodic basis without a lot of heavy lifting um, to understand what's going on within your company. You can, pull, you can do the 10-minute survey. It comes back. You can see very, very quickly. They're really nicely designed products. And you can see quickly where people, you know, beliefs, ideas are, are kind of sitting, make micro adjustments or macro adjustments, and pulse them again and set the tone from the top. Nothing new, but so critical and so important that I wanted to emphasize it. It comes from, the, as the CEO and the founder, you, set the bar you are the barometer for the temperature within your company. So you have to set the tone around setting this foundation and building from there. Building high-performing teams. Um, I'll run through this relatively quickly, and then I have a how coming up. But Seemingly simple again, hire the very best leaders. Simple, but not so simple. Take the time to think about who you're gonna part with, partner with to do those searches, or if you're gonna do it yourself, think about, come up with a strategy for doing that. Um, there are tools out there, use a scorecard for write down the accountabilities. 
whether you're 50 people, 300 people, what do you want that chief marketing officer, what do you want that VP of finance to do over the next 12, 18, 24 months? If you can list the accountabilities, you then have a template against which to hire and a criteria so that when you go to market, you can be very articulate, consistent across your team and your board around who you want and why, which gives you some objectivity around evaluating candidates. Set high expectations. You, when you know, people go into Mark Zuckerberg's office or Cheryl's office or Jay Parikh's office at Facebook and you present what you're doing, either from a product or a process or some other idea, they will often come back and say, that's great, that's a great baseline. Now, 10x the idea. What's the 10x of what you just presented after you've just spent years and time working on whatever it is? So I encourage all of you to build a culture and to incorporate that into the landscape of the company that you're building. 10x and create that kind of a mindset and you'll be amazed by the results. Trust with your employees. When employees join your organization, there's a psychological contract that you're entering into. Be aware of it, know what it is, and to the best of your ability, try not to violate it. And when you do, talk about it. Manage the culture. You're gonna hear this a few times today, but really, intentionally manage that culture. No matter how small or big, it's something you can do. We can now have ready tools to manage it with data, but proactively manage it. Retain your great performers. Know who your top 15% are all the time, especially in the competitive market, and retain them. This kind of goes with the pay unfairly, which is number six. This is, you know, Laszlo Bach, who is the SVP of people operations at Google, wrote work rules that came out two years ago, and one of the big controversial things that he said is to pay unfairly. And as somebody who has recruited and tried to win people against Google several times, they do pay unfairly, very much so. It's very hard to compete. But when you're either attracting a great leader, retaining your top 15%, pay them unfairly. Not everybody in the same job has to make the same amount of, um, amount of money. Develop your leaders. This is an area that I have particular passion around, and I'll talk about leadership in a minute, your leadership system. But investing, having people, so that you know, compensation in, a ca in cash and equity is one thing. People want to be at companies, startups through big, where they think that there's a huge investment in them, that they're gonna be able to grow at that company. You're never too small to talk about de developing your leaders and developing your employees, and that comes from, uh, from you, the CEOs. Align incentives, compensation, performance. There are great tools out there for compensation, option impact, Compensia. Most people use RAD for when you get to a certain size, but there are tremendous resources for early stage companies. Use them. Embrace your mistakes. This is again back to building trust. Um, talk about them, admit them, learn from them. And create a feedback loop. I would challenge all of you to go back today and think, what kind of a feedback mechanism do we have within the company to talk about what we're doing? Especially as you scale and grow and you raise your B and you raise your C and you raise your D. Are you able to, it's, it's harder and harder to understand what's going, with, what's going on within the different or, you know, organizations within your company, within the different functions. So create a systematic feedback loop to help you get that input and fire fast. Once you know you made a mistake, you've got to move on. Quick examples. Che Wong is the founder of a company called Boxed. Boxed is the Costco online for millennials. He was the son of Chinese immigrants, and he was the first in his whole family to go to university. He thought the experience was so impactful, not only to him, but also to his family, that he just offered to send, he has 500 employees, including the employees in his fulfillment centers, he offered to send all of the, their children to college on his dime. Not suggesting that everybody go out there and do that, but it's an unbelievable example of a CEO conveying his commitment to his employee base. And of his corporate employees, he has about 125. He's had 23 turnover since he started the company two and a half years ago. Unbelievable, but get creative. James Reinhardt is one of the best recruiter CEOs that I've worked with. He is the CEO and founder of a company called ThreadUp, which is consignment clothing. And when he was sub 100 people, he decided 
instead of using the conventional logic of going and recruiting a CMO by pattern matching or hiring from another tech competitor, he thought he did not want to use a recruiter, and he went out to market and said, what are the best brands in the world? Which brands do I hold in the highest esteem? And the one that he came up with was Virgin America. He went out with less than 100 people at his whole company and hired Anthony Marino, who was still there. He went and hired the CMO of Virgin America as a fledgling venture-backed company in Silicon Valley. It can be done, get good at recruiting. Brian Chesky, I mentioned Brian. Most people are aware of Airbnb. They, two years ago, 2014, multi-billion dollar valuation, doing unbelievably well. They had six core values that they adhered to. Brian went back, pulled the whole leadership team around a table. They revisited all of their values, stripped two away, one of which was simplicity, and they decided their business was getting too complex to kind of honor that and everything they were doing. So that is no longer a core value at Airbnb, and they redid their value sets. It's as you grow, as you change, as you scale, revisit the content, revisit your values, make sure that you're living what you say you're living, and be authentic about it. And companies as big as Airbnb have done it. Quickly, developing leaders. There's a leadership system within the companies, big, small. It's comprised of the CEOs and founders, CXOs and VPs, the leadership team, the people managers, and I really want to highlight and emphasize the individual contributors who are often co-founders who do not manage big functions or team. Critically important, influential leaders within your company. And figure out how to embrace them and, and consider them a part of the leadership system. So training, mentorship, um, what, whatever it is, coaching, because people look to them, even though they may not be running it. You know, their, their role may have changed over time. I'll run through this quickly. Take action. In terms of building high-performing teams, for hiring the best leaders, use tools, hire the best search partners, figure out, use your venture firms, use your investors to figure out who to hire, and sell. Everybody on that team, on that hiring panel, on your leadership team should be able to sell at every turn. Set high expectations, the 10x challenge I talked about. Build trust the language you use, the feedback mechanisms you have, the tools are really important. Manage the culture proactively, surveys, feedback, empower your employees to do things, make decisions, and make changes. Retain your top performers, big star next to this one, know your top 15% and get arms around them. Pay unfairly, same type of thing. Your best people, as Laszlo says, are probably being underpaid right now. And they'll deliver way more value than you think. Develop your leaders, align comp, embrace mistakes, create a feedback loop, and fire fast. Take the time to make sure you're making the right decision, and once you know it's got, not going to work, know the law and do it. This is the Blue Angels. I wish you all the best in your own journeys. Thank you.